One of the things I think is very striking about Harold and about the Foundation's work is his and the Foundation's abiding belief that there is one Jewish people and that in some basic sense, everyone in that larger group has to find a way to be connected to one another and to work together in fundamental ways towards a shared future. So many of the projects of the Foundation speak to that commitment. So you take a program like PJ Library and you say that everyone in the Jewish community, every household with a Jewish child should receive this set of books, should be engaging with a shared canon. That's not just an ambition to scale a project. That is actually a statement of value that everyone is in this together. What he wants is to make the Jewish community vibrant, and he wants all windows to be open and doors. That's who he is. So these are just ideas that come to him. He seems to find a need, and then he fills it. I think I'm also always struck by Harold at the young age of 90, uh, how much he has and manifests such a love of life and the human spirit. It comes out in the connection to the outdoors. It comes in the pieces of art that I encounter in his home. Uh, but the notion that the human being is an incredible reservoir of possibility is what I think attracts him to that art and to what it is for a human being to be in that broader world of nature. And that is inspiring. One thing about Harold and being a friend of Harold is that he has this, starts with his own remarkable embrace of life. He really lives it. He doesn't just sit around. He, he hikes everywhere. He goes everywhere. He goes white water rafting. He just enjoys life. There is a tirelessness. There is a sense of both just the raw energy, if you've ever been hiking with him or in any kind of outdoor setting, you know this, but the sense of unflagging commitment to the world, to the Jewish people, to the Jewish future. Uh, there is something kind of inspiringly exhausting about spending time with him because he never runs out of energy to take the next step. It's surprising to me that nobody thought of this before because what Harold did was he took what is one of the most intimate and loving moments in a parent-child relationship and he put that together with Jewish books, which is reading to your child at bedtime. Jews have known about the power of that moment, saying Shema Yisrael with your children at night, but Harold put this together with books of Jewish content, which was brought into the homes of people who did not read Jewish books to their children. The genius of putting those two aspects together has had a remarkable ripple effect. You don't just send a book to a family, you figure out how the parent is going to be a partner in reading that book to their child. The Howard Grinspoon Foundation has always emphasized how can we and do we partner with other people to grow the pie of commitment. That's what I've always been struck by. People are always interested in growing the pie in terms of how can we give people more things? How can we share more with other people? But to grow the pie of commitment, where you are actually asking what are the steps we could take so that more people will get involved, more people will give more, that requires a certain gritty determination and also a certain kind of stubborn optimism. Harold Grinson will be the most the greatest Jewish philanthropist of his generation, of this generation. I, I, you can say that in quantitative numbers, but it, uh, to me it's not the numbers. Harold had become the primary funder of what I call the basic infrastructure of Jewish life and Jewish flourishing. For example, camps. Again, he grasped so early that camps is a remarkable social experience, that these are perhaps the most powerful childhood experiences that any Jews can have. Israel, Israel trips invested in youth programs and youth movements. We all know that he's an entrepreneur. And I've always said he has put his entrepreneurial expertise into the Jewish world. Yes, that's what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur. You have to see it before anybody else does. <laughs> or maybe you have to see it before to get out in time. Also, another one of Harold's great qualities, to spot it quickly and then to not be afraid on the country to push ahead and trust your own judgment, back it, expand it, give it an opportunity to create to the Jewish people. It's a remarkable act in which you see love and appreciation of life and the sense of Jewish rootedness
turns into a all-embracing love and help for the Jewish people, the Jewish nation, for Israel. I have such a powerful memory of going along uh, in Aspen on a bike, doing my best with the mountain air to which I was not yet fully acclimated uh, to kind of keep up and zooming along behind me, catching up and surpassing me, Harold comes by and without missing a beat says, so what do you think the Jewish future is gonna be in 70 years from now? It felt like such a powerful instantiation of everything about Harold, literally taking that 30,000 foot view of where we are and saying the key question we always have to ask is where are we going? Every dollar he's given, he's evoked a matching really three or four times as much. And I think that's in part a tribute to the quality of the programs and the common sense way in which he gives people a chance to join into them. I, I think also with Harold personally, there was a tremendous sense of gratitude. He talks about it all the time. Uh, you know, he, he wants to give credit to all the Jews before him who studied, who learned. I think it's had the effect that, that he takes tremendous pride, as he should. There's no false modesty about what he's accomplished. He's thrilled about PJ Library, he's thrilled about camping. And that is also very inspiring. A lot of times when I think about Harold and his work and the Foundation's work, I'm brought back to uh, one of our most ancient rabbinic texts. Um, it's a text in, uh, in the Mishnah, compiled about 2,000 years ago, uh, where it says in the, in the Hebrew original, Ezehu chacham haro'e et hanolad, which means, who is wise? One who sees that which has not yet come to pass one who sees the future. That wisdom in some sense is the ability to look at the world as it is and to be able to project out, but here's what it should look like. Here's what it could look like. Not just what I want it to look like, but what I think I realistically could hope it would be. And the thing I love about that text is actually the Hebrew word nolad, which idiomatically seems to mean the future, also means the one who is born. That is to say, you might translate that aphorism as who is wise, the one who knows how to look at a child. And that is something that Harold does so powerfully and so consistently to understand, you wanna know what the Jewish future is going to look like or what it could look like? Well, look at it through the eyes of a child because that's going to be the person who will be there in 70 years assessing where we've come.